My destination was Bangkok, Thailand. It was here in this fast-paced city that I would explore the art of massage. Ancient Thai massage is an extraordinary method of aligning the energies of the body and is believed to originate from the time of the Buddha. Its origins can be found in ancient India, a time when healing and religion were closely linked. Medicine evolved within the monastery, becoming part of the Buddhist scriptures. It gave rise to the monk healers and provided the basis for development of Buddhist monastic universities. When Buddhism reached Thailand in the 3rd or 2nd century BC, temples were built with dispensaries and medical schools. At Thailand's famous Wat Ho, the temple practice is still maintained by the monks. Massage and other healing arts have survived the test of time and evolved into a daily ritual for many in Thailand. The modern spa takes the best of the ancient practices and adds a few extra touches. Um, Thai massage has been happening over a thousand, thousands of years ago and it's a mixture of yoga, Ayurvedic medicine and Buddhism, spiritual healing. And basically just the monks used to give and receive Thai massage and then it went into different families, started to give each other Thai massage and they believe it's um, all over body healing and there are Sen channels within the body. The Chinese call them Qi and the Indians Prana and energy flows through the body. And so they work on the different Sen channels. It also, uh, a lot of manipulation, uh, increases your flexibility and all over body healing. Because we're stretching the muscles help relieve pain at the same time. Actually, the more often you have a Thai massage, the better it is for you, especially if you don't do a lot, a lot of exercise. You should always exercise, of course, but this also helps increase the flexibility. So for all the people who don't do strenuous exercise, you need to still stretch your muscles, and we would recommend a Thai massage for them. While Indian and Thai massage were evolving, the Chinese were continuing with the ancient practice of reflexology. Started several thousand years ago by the Chinese, the Indians, and the Egyptians. And it wasn't until the 1900s that uh, Dr. Fitzgerald um, discovered that the reflex zones in the feet are connected to reflex areas in the rest of the body. Each person has a different theory. They say like um, pressure points on the soles of the feet will release endorphins that will stop pain or it will um, increase the blood circulation or build up of toxins, will release the toxins from the blood and allow the blood to flow more freely within the body. You, you always start with the left foot, I noticed. They well, start with the left foot because that's where the heart is. And they start um, with the heart, putting pressure on the heart to get the blood pumping and the circulation going. Now, is there anyone that this is not recommended for? Well, they recommend if you're pregnant, if you have high blood pressure, also if you're uh, just had a meal, <clears throat> you shouldn't have reflexology. So avoid it if, you, if you're pregnant. Avoid it if you're pregnant, if you have high blood pressure. Or you've just eaten. But for, for stress relief, for, like for, for busy executives and so on, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, ideal sort of treatments? It's ideal because what it does, or they claim it does, it relieves stress, it improves your blood circulation, and it brings the body back into balance. So after you've had an illness, or an accident, or just under a lot of stress, it would help heal the body faster. It doesn't heal the body, but it will help the healing process by bringing the body back into balance. 
When you have the reflexology treatment, I've heard people say that um, they've sometimes felt sick afterwards. That's correct, especially if you're having it for the first time and you're not used to it, because it tends to release toxins within the body, and we recommend that you drink a lot of hot water after treatment to flush it out, and you'll be fine. Aromatherapy combines massage with the sense of smell, using aromatic oils to convey different moods. traditional Thai facial and the ingredients that we use is mainly pry and kamin. Pry is from the ginger root family and so the kamin and the rejuvenating properties of pry as well as antiseptic and kamin is good too for the flexibility and suppleness of the skin. We also use traditional herbs to do the scrub, uh, honey for the massage and a cucumber mask. Oh, there are many benefits of having a facial. The first one is it gives you a thorough cleansing of the face, uh, exfoliates the skin, gets rid of all the dead skin cells, and also relieves stress in the same time. A uh, mask that will rejuvenate the skin, bring suppleness back to the skin, give you a more youthful appearance after a facial, and therefore you will look much younger after a facial but it doesn't help the aging process or slow it down. Facials are ideal for everybody, young and old, men and women. We're in this active lifestyle that we all lead. We don't spend enough time taking care of ourselves. And men think that facials are only a thing for ladies, but definitely for everybody.